are these people? What is it like having to deal with Western foreign policy? You know, can you share your, your day to days? You know, <laughs> people living in Damascus under threat of Israel retaliation constantly. Um, you know. Actually, I mean, um, it, it, that's quite a difficult question to answer in a condensed way. Yeah. Um, one of the reasons, if I speak personally, one of the reasons I live here is I don't have to explain myself 24 seven. Right. Um, you know, when I was living in Europe, nobody really got what I was talking about. Nobody really understood the issues in Palestine or a very small minority did. And I was endlessly getting banned from dinner invitations and so on, because at that time, the, the Syria propaganda was rampant. Um, Assad was, you know, the big bogeyman for everyone in the West. Uh, and so it became very difficult for me to be arguing the reality with people that were completely brainwashed by Western media and government institutions and UN agencies and so on you know, to the point of complete ignorance over what was happening here. So from that perspective, I'm a lot happier here because, as I said, I'm, I'm in the heart of the resistance. I mean, Syria is the land bridge between uh, Iran, Iraq and the Palestinian and Lebanese resistance. Syria, one of the reasons that this war was waged against Syria was because of its steadfast solidarity. Um, with Palestinians and with the Palestinian cause and with the resistance <coughs> factions. Um, but living under Western barbarism and economic savagery is very difficult. I mean, in the Northeast, you have the US um, occupying Syrian resources, which includes all of its oil resources um, and trading those oil, re oil resources. Um, outside the country, so depriving the Syrian people of energy and fuel, um, which impacts on all aspects of their lives, from the health sector to the education sector, um, to um, transport, um, to heating in the winter, to air conditioning in the summer, to fridges working or not working, um, to not being able to pump water to the water tanks, etc. So it has a, a very debilitating um, effect on civilian life here. And then the fact that Syria is, is effectively under blockade. I mean, it's occupied on <clears throat> two thirds of its borders by hostile um, entities, including Turkey, including um, US proxies, uh, US direct military occupation, um, Israel in the south, and the only exit really is is to um, Lebanon and Jordan, but Jordan has has played a, a real double game, um, you know, throughout, and is definitely not a friend of the resistance access. Um, and and of course now you've got an actual um, NATO base being established <laughs> in Jordan, which pretty much says everything that you need to know about Jordan. Um, and so, you know, life here is, is tough. 90% of people are living below whatever poverty line you want to apply to that whole um, paradigm. Um, there's very little future for them. There's, very, there's a lot of difficulty for people to actually leave Syria. Um, there's a lot of embargoes now on, on um, travel for Syrians because of the so-called refugee crisis, which of course, is a direct result of, of US cartel near colonialism, but of course that's forgotten in the whole refugee crisis narrative. Um, so it's, it's tough. I'm not gonna say it isn't tough. I have a relatively privileged position because I'm paid outside. So I'm bringing dollars into the country. Um, it, it's a lot easier for me. I'm not gonna say it's incredibly difficult for me but at the same time you know you are living um i mean where the, the area where i'm living we've had three houses destroyed uh pretty close to me by israeli assassination attempts there have been uh at least three or four israeli assassinations on the road five minutes away from me 
Um, and, you know, Damascus, as you said, is regularly targeted, um, as is uh, Homs, Mesyaf, Latakia, Aleppo, um, more recently has twice been targeted and, and Israel has actually violated Syrian airspace to do so using Jordanian airspace and the Al Tanif US military base as air cover to enter from the east. Um, so, you know, at the moment, to, to a degree, what Syria, I think, is trying to do is to clear the military decks in preparation for any kind of escalation with Israel. So you've got the Syrian Arab army right now trying to clean the central desert area of the ISIS terrorist cells that are being armed and, and equipped by the US as another of their proxies and have been attacking both civilians and uh, military bases and, and vehicles, etc. Um, you've got ongoing negotiations to normalize relations with Turkey, which, you know, are, are very dependent on whether Erdogan is prepared to basically withdraw from all Syrian territory that he's currently occupying and to withdraw his, his terrorist proxies and his uh, military forces that are on the ground inside Syria, illegally, of course. Uh, and so the necessity is to basically for Syria to take control of the area north of the M4, which is the arterial road from Aleppo in the north to Latakia on the coast, which currently is a sort of no man's land, um, supposedly patrolled by Russia and Turkey, although that has only just started up again. So, you know, Syria is in a position where I think it's really trying to, to clean everything up in preparation for any kind of expansion of the war because if there is escalation into lebanon then syria will automatically be pulled into that um, right. but what it has been doing is opening up its territory of course for example for the um, iraqi resistance forces and various other kind of unnamed resistance factions that have been attacking israel from syrian territory and that's another reason that, that Syria is constantly being targeted by Israel, because Israel is perfectly well aware that the role that Syria is playing, despite having its hands full militarily, economically, politically, it is still opening up its territory and making itself vulnerable in order to um, provide assistance for, for Gaza and the Palestinians.